Hi everyone, it's Jeff here from Avada. In this video, I'll be taking a look at working with colour in Avada. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell icon to be notified of all new content. OK, let's begin. When it comes to working with colour in Avada, the place to start is the Global Colour Palette, which you will find in the Global Options under Colour. I have a clean install of Avada here, and as you can see, the Global Palette comes pre-populated with a colour scheme. If you use the Avada Setup Wizard to set up a new site, setting the colours of this Global Colour Palette is part of the process. You can choose from a wide range of pre-built colour palettes, and regardless of which one you start with, you can fully customise it as your own. For best results, the idea is to start with your lightest colours and work through to the darkest. Generally, you will set your white and bright tones, then your accent and primary colours, and then your darker colours or tones. The general idea with a primary and accent colour in the palette is that in your designs, colour 5 goes with colour 1 and colour 4 goes with colour 8, thereby maintaining good levels of contrast. The accessibility recommendations in the Setup Wizard also help you to check the contrast and luminance order of your palette, which is one reason the Setup Wizard is a great way to get started. See the video on the Avada Setup Wizard to fully explore what that can do for you. And of course, if you import one of our pre-built websites to start, the global colour palette for that site comes with it. OK, let's go back to the global colour palette and the global options. Here we can see the core global colour palette of eight colours. You can add further colours if needed by clicking on the Add New Colour button here, and you can also rename your colours to whatever you want. The next option is the primary colour, and here it has already been set to the colour 5 position, which is typically the primary colour. One important differentiation to make here is that you are setting the colour position rather than the specific colour. This is because if the colour itself changes on the palette, it will change here as well, as well as anywhere else this option gets pulled. So once you have your global colour palette and primary colours in place, you can then use the colour positions in this global colour palette in other global, page and element options, thereby creating a deeply integrated system of colour management. If I head to the global defaults for Avada Builder Elements, and open up an element, we can see the various default colours are connected to various global palette colours. It's when a website has had all its colour options tied to colour positions from the colour palette that when it's at its most powerful. Avada comes already set up using this method by default, and so do all the pre-builds, so let's look at an example. I've got the Handyman pre-built here, and if we look at the global colour palette, here colour 4 is the primary colour and it has been used in many places. So if I go to the colour 4 position and paste in a new colour here with a hexadecimal code, look how the whole site basically changes at once. Everywhere that was referencing colour 4 is now displaying the new colour. And as I scroll down the page we can see just how many elements have changed colour. This is a good illustration of just how powerful this feature is. If I put the old colour back, the site returns to how it was. One easy way to check and set global colours is to use the search function. If I simply search for colour, we can see as I slowly scroll down that most options have been tied to a specific position on the colour palette. If we make a change to any colour on the colour palette, it will ripple through the entire website. With Avada, colour management is as easy as it gets. OK, let's now take a closer look at the colour picker, as there are two versions, and it's good to know its secrets. I'll just come out of my search and back into colours. If we look at the primary colour option here, we can see that it has a grey background and that there is a blue globe icon on the right. These denote that a global option has been set. If we click on the globe, we can choose a colour from the global colour palette. And if we click on the advanced options icon, we can see that there are options here to adjust the global colour by adding a value to their hue, saturation, luminance or transparency. A stands for alpha channel. In this way, the adjusted colours are tied to the selected global colour and this method is a great way to add further colours to the site without adding more colours to the colour palette. See the How to Use the Advanced Global Palette Colour Options video for more information on this awesome colour tool. To close the global colour palette, we can either click on the globe again or just click outside it. If we click on the colour indicator though, we disconnect the link to the global colour and now we have the standard colour palette. While you can use this to set colour in any of your options, we definitely recommend using the global colours wherever possible. In my case, let me just use it to demonstrate some basic principles of the tool. As you can see here, the colour selected is displayed as a hexadecimal code. To change the colour, you can paste in a hexadecimal code here at the very top, 
You can also just move the circle around or click anywhere in the color picker to choose a color. Let's now look at the two sliders on the right. The first one is saturation. As we bring that up or down, the saturation of the color is affected. If we bring it completely down to the bottom, we have removed all color from the picker and we are now working in tones of black, white and gray. Alternatively, if you drag it down but not all the way, it removes most of the saturation and gives you access to a huge range of pastel and muted colors. The slider to the right is a transparency slider. You will note that as soon as I begin to bring this slider down, the hexadecimal code changes to an RGBA code. This is a way of expressing color using three RGB values and a transparency or alpha value. A half transparent color, for example, equates to its three RGB values with 0.5 at the end. The equivalent of this in the global color palette options would be minus 50 in the alpha channel. Okay, let's just set this back to color four. Now as you are editing, you will come across many color options. These all have one of four initial states. If the specific option is connected to a global color, the color indicator will display the chosen color with the global color name next to it, the globe icon will be blue, and the option will also have a gray background. If the option is not connected to a global color, but has a default color coming from the global options, there will be no text in the option, but there will be a color in the color indicator, and the default value will be listed in the description. If a hexadecimal or RGBA value has already been set, the value will show in the option, and the color will display in the color indicator. Finally, if no value has been set, and there is no default value, then all areas will be empty. With Avada, it's best to think of colors from the top down. Particularly when starting a new site, it is a very good idea to set your colors in the global color palette in the color tab before building anything. And there, the setup wizard is your best friend. The next step would be to set the color options at a global level for any element you use. And then finally, at the element level, you can override these if you require. Okay, thanks for watching. As you can see, color management in Avada is both structured and easy to use. Okay, that's it for this video. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all our latest videos. And if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.